Hi, this is Lokesh Kumar from Informatica P360 support team. Today, let's look at the Informatica P360 host architecture of 8.1.1. Coming to agenda, we are going to walk through the P360 host architecture, which is a generic architecture, which we're going to cover in the first place. After which, we're going to look at the different options available based on the requirement of customer or the possibilities. So coming to the generic cloud architecture for P360, basically there are two VPCs, one for the network load balancer or the application load balancer and next one, next VPC is the main VPC which has the P360 core components. So if you look at the users that are, um, that are the traffic that enters into the Informatica network for accessing the P360 clients, say it could be a P360 desktop client, a REST client, web client, or supplier portal or ActiveWars. So everything is an uh, HTTP or HTTPS call. Uh, of course, since this is a hosted environment, then the, the access is from the users within the other, uh, over the internet or the other organizations, it's an HTTPS uh, secure URL the traffic goes and hits the first VPC. So in order to access the first VPC, this way the possibility is through the Aviatrix VPN gateway or through the tunnel. So this is the tunnel uh, which first hits, which has the network load balancer or the application load balancer. Okay, and from the gateway, it's gonna go through, it's gonna segregate whether it's an TCP connection or the HTTP connection. So if you look at the uh, the green line, which tells whether it is a PIM internal protocol or if it's a blue, which is an HTTP or HTTPS call. So from the gateway, the request is routed along the load balancers, and HA proxy is is not a mandatory, but it depends whether it needs whether the request or the P360 URLs have to be exposed to the internet, so and whether they have to be. Uh, or the users have to be whitelisted by exposing to the internet so that's where HA proxy comes into picture so here we maintain the IP whitelisting if it's exposed to the internet and via the HA proxy the traffic enters into the other VPC which has the product 360 components so this is the main product 360 components uh, which is nothing but each it has multiple EC2 instances each instance holds a different component of P360. One, one is for P360 server, the other one is for uh, ActiveOS, P360 BPM, and the other one is for media manager, process engine, uh, and then supplier portal, something like that. So this is the main component, product 360 component, which is available in this application VPC. And this is the VPC, which is which has the load balancers. Uh, if the request is routed uh, from via the VPC, from the internet or through the gateway, to the product list component based on the need if so the server has to connect to the database so it, it connects to the actual uh, AWS RTS instance where we have the database and in case if it has to access the files or the it has to access the shared files or the uh, file system that is needed for the different tab servers um, uh, different servers the supplier for the server needs p server needs license file or store the import export data files or it, it needs to maintain server properties everything so that is within the EFS share so this is an AWS terminology of EFS a file system that will be used for these files now when 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 the servers are exposed uh, to the users through S3 bucket so that is an one more terminology from AWS this is a S3 bucket system of, uh, which stores the uh, files uh, which has a huge storage the s3 bucket is one of the component where the logs and the other properties files are exposed to the users so that they can modify the config and then update it uh, if it's a dev environment they can update it and upload to s3 bucket and there are automated scripts so which which are developed by informatica which will review these files if they, and then take them and put it on the efs by taking a backup and then restart the server so that's the process when it comes to the resource of servers as well and along with the uh, uh, other files of properties or the license files or the logs we the s3 bucket will also expose the uh, hot folder uh, hot folder directory where the users can uh, 
uh, drop in the files and it will be automatically picked. So to pick these files from the S3 bucket, there is a direct connection. You can see the blue line to the P360 server. The P360 server uh, already has a code which checks the S3 bucket S3 bucket for a new files and then picks and process it. Another component is the message queue, AWS message queue, uh, where we can maintain the queues which are needed for audit trail on the media manager. Apart from this, if uh, if if the end user or the customer need a one volt sync, they use one volt sync. Then there is also an exposure of using an LB here for the one volt sync, so that whatever uh, the traffic uh, comes from P360 server uh, to store the data or send the message to the B2B pool and then to the one volt sinks. So it goes via same process P360 server again connects back to the HA proxy if, if, it's, if it's really needed else it goes via through the application load balancer and then it communicates with the one volt sink back and forth. So apart from this um, there are two internal components that are used here are the NAT gateway and Route 53 which is which is internally at the network layer to, to make sure the traffic is sent only back to the internet but not the internet traffic is allowed within to the P360 server directly because this is a private subnet and this is the VPC which is exposed again via the gateway tunnel. So this VPC application VPC is not directly exposed to the over the internet or over the gateway only the application load balancers or the load balancers which holds the VPC use the VPC pairing concept to connect with the private VPC that we have it. So the only two components which are options are one is one volt sync based on the requirement and the need by the customer the other one is a HA proxy for whitelisting. Let's look at these options of uh, using the gateway or the uh, or the HA proxy accessing to the internet or the, to the gateway in the next slide. All right, coming to the options available on top of the architecture. The first one is using the transit VPC with only VPN. So what the traffic that comes from the users, so the green line indicating the primitive network protocol, which is, it could be a TCP connection or a blue and red uh, the rest communication or the HTTPS communication it's the gateway so it, the users should have a VPN gateway to access the VPC like I have mentioned here so they should have a uh, VPN gateway to hit the network load balancer before uh, reaching out to the product 60 server and subsequently HA proxy may or may not be used for the IP whitelisting and the second option which is available is transit VPC only public access so in this case we don't have any VPN connectivity rather rather, rather the traffic from the users hits the network load balancer which is exposed to public and subsequently the traffic is routed or towards uh, direct P360 or via the HA proxy based on the IP whitelisting so when we have a gateway, which is an option one, the whitelisting happens at the gateway. But if it's a public, the IP whitelisting can is done only at the HA proxy level. Here comes the option three, which is a mixed mode of both having VPN and also having a HA proxy. So here it's, it's like a two-way of security, where we the first the first security or um, the first door for the users is the VPN gateway and after which it goes through whatever the network or load by application load balancer based on the type of the traffic and once the traffic is routed via these load balancers it, it hits the HA proxy and then uh, it routes to P360 so if you look at it uh, here closely so the traffic splits towards the network load balancer application load balancer depends on the type of the call so if there is an issue uh, only that only rich client is not connecting but web client is working so there is that the network load balancer has to be looked at if it's web client is working it's not working but the rich client is working then there is an issue of the application load balancer for the web traffic all right uh, we would like to hear from you so you can email us at support videos at or you can uh, you can follow us on Twitter
Thank you.